Over the course of the next five minutes, we're going to be taking you through all of the different tools that you can use to set up Blender exactly how you need it for your projects. So let's get started. First of all, if you go to the edit menu and then to preferences, you'll get a wide variety of options that you can use to manipulate the Blender interface. Under system, you can choose the cycles render device for when you're using the cycles render engine. When set to none, this will be set to the CPU. CUDA is for older NVIDIA graphics cards. Optics for newer graphics cards from NVIDIA. HIP from AMD. And one API if you're using an Intel based GPU. You can also choose to register your blend files with the current blender version. This will be useful in case you are upgrading over time from one version of Blender to the next and you have Blend files that are associated with older versions. The Memory Undo Steps option allows you to perform Ctrl Z to undo previous steps in your project. The higher this number, the further back you can go in your project. It is recommended in most cases to keep this at either 32 or 64, depending on the device that you are using. If you go to the save and load section, you'll be able to determine the number of saved versions, as well as the number of recent files that you can access when you go to file and open recent. You can increase the number of saved versions and this can be used to maintain previous versions of your work. The autosave option is also useful if you want to save your project periodically. By default, the timer is set to two minutes, but you can increase this or decrease this at your leisure. Up at the top, we have the interface option. Here you can determine the resolution scale which represents all of the little elements within Blender's user interface. The higher this value, the larger those elements look. This will change depending on the resolution and size of your monitor. For example, if I click and drag to reduce the size of the resolution scale, all of the elements will get smaller and smaller. It goes as low as around 0.5 and can go as high as 3.0 you should look to find the resolution scale that is best for your display's size and resolution. If English is not your default language, come down to the language section in the interface tab and select the language. This will bring up a menu that allows you to choose a different language from the many options that are available. For example, we can change the language of the UI from English to Spanish. And if I want, I can also come back up to the same area and change it back to English. If you are using a smaller keyboard or a laptop, come down to the input tab and you'll be able to emulate the number pad. This means that if you don't have a number pad, then the number keys on top of your keyboard will maintain that functionality rather than their own. You can also emulate a free button mouse and you can do this by holding down the Alt key and then using the left mouse button as you move around on your touchpad if using a laptop. Add-ons and extensions are a great way of enhancing Blender's ability to perform a wide variety of different tasks. You can choose to enable add-ons simply by left clicking to open up the tick box or you can go to get new extensions which you have to install from this list. For example, we can just pick one, click install and within a few seconds it will add that extension to our version of Blender. When creating a new project, you can set things up very quickly by choosing a template. For example, if I wanted to use Blender for video editing, I can choose the video editing template. This gives me the two workspaces that I need to begin video editing in Blender. If I want to do sculpting, I can choose the sculpting workspace. 
or if I just want the traditional workflow of creating models, then I would choose the general workspace. Finally, to set things up for rendering and animation, come over first of all to the render tab and make sure you have the correct render engine for your project. This can be either Eevee or Cycles. With Cycles, you can change the device from CPU to GPU. Then you can experiment with many of the settings below to change the rendered look. Directly below the render tab, we have the output tab. This is where you'll be able to define your output resolution, resolution scale, aspect ratio, frame rate and frame range for animations, as well as the output where you're going to save your animated files. But that pretty much wraps up all of the need to know stuff to get started with Blender for any purpose. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notifications bell icon for updates and future Blender related tutorials.